comment from some of my runners um, in all five of the groups. So it, we thought we'd take a minute to say something about it. And that thing's about sleep. Nothing replaces sleep. Nothing at all. There is no pill you can take, no food you can eat, no magic drink, not even coffee. And yeah, I've had whatever coffee you're about to suggest. Don't at me, like whatever coffee you would suggest. Guarantee I've tried it. It is not the same as sleep. So here's what you need to do. Plan to get it. And that might sound ridiculous, but you need to plan to get it. Here's how I do it with the husband that travels and all the chaos back here. Her name is Sarah. She's right there. Sarah comes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And she's much better at braiding hair than I am. So the key to a good team, it's not finding someone necessarily that's smarter than you. It's about finding someone that's good at the things you suck at. Sarah is amazing, and she braids things and picks outfits out. And I never hear yelling in the morning, so I don't know how she gets them to not scream at each other, but it happens. So she's really good. And she's strong in the places where I'm, I'm weak, especially when I'm tired. And uh, the person that comes Monday, Wednesday, Friday as well. We have so, oh, we've had someone guarding that slot in the morning from 6 to 9 um, for the past five years. And the reason that time is important is that usually that's when I go running. But at last year, um, I needed someone to legit take the kids to school when I couldn't sit up when I was on bed rest. And now, when I'm barely sleeping through the night um, and too, definitely too tired to run, I need someone to take the baby and braid the hairs and make the lunches so that I can get two hours sleep and that two hours sleep can be the dip, that extra two hours sleep between like six and, and nine with them taking the kids to school in a worst case scenario. That can make the difference between whether or not I'm scared to drive the car, let alone run. So that's my deep thought of the day and the thing I really want you to think about is are you planning to get sleep? If not, do it. And yes, I understand that we're privileged to have help and that we're there, but we also plan around that too. We, we don't take fancy vacations. We don't, as a family, we don't. I will have my mom watch the kids so my husband and I can go away together once a year for a couple of days. Hence Alaska last year and, and Lake Louise for my 40th. That's pretty much it. We don't travel, we don't drive fancy cars. Most of my clothes come from eBay and Poshmark because the best investment I can have in my family is my sanity and that comes from, once again, her name is Sarah on Tuesday, Thursdays. And, yes, that's Shadow. From Sarah on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Courtney on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So all this just to say, Pam, for example, congratulations on making a good choice not to run today, but I would think about this tonight. That was what kind of stuck out for me in your note. It's not that your anxiety is unrealistic. It's that you it's that you didn't acknowledge it before you went to bed. So what I would challenge you to do a little differently tonight is to think about sleeping the way my husband and I do. We know that the kids need at least one sane person who's had a good night's sleep around them at all times, and that will either be a teacher, a Sarah, a Courtney, uh, or an MK, a mom or a dad. So when we think of it in those terms, we don't do my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, your turn through the night. We do shifts. I go, I come home. He comes home on Thursdays and sometimes I'm so tired, I'm like, bye. I go straight to bed and then I will take over every noise she makes from one in the morning onward, one in the morning onward, yes. Or whatever we, have, whatever we decide. So sometimes it's four to midnight and then he's on for midnight after that. So. I use that as an example for the people in the marathon and the half marathon group that also have young children. It is tough. It is hard. There's no easy answer. There, but what we can do, or what we can try to do, is plan a little bit around it. So I'm not saying you're, you're being bad parents at all. I'm saying you're not being fair to yourselves when you don't get enough sleep, don't get the run done, and don't feel good about yourself, or worry about your performance as a result. What you need to worry about are those beautiful children, how good you can be on as little sleep as you've gotten, and try to do something a little bit differently the next night. When, you, when there's something big, like a breathing issue that maybe one partner is more sensitive to, maybe that just means you go to bed earlier. Maybe that means you come home after work, you have dinner together as a family, and then you hit the sack and get ready to potentially take over all night. Because, you know, you, if eight hours of sleep is what you need, or what most of us need, when it's unbroken, when it's broken up into chunks and you're getting up a lot, most of us really need closer to 12. Or at least a 12... Uh, a 12-hour period. It's not ideal. It's not perfect. Nothing ever will be. 
but planning ahead a little bit can go a long way to sanity in the long run. So I really want you rested and sane and happy when I get to meet you in Cape Cod. Yay! Yay, 9.15. I feel you, and I think that's great, but I would challenge you on a night like tonight. Let's try to make it like 7.15. And I know that sounds absurdly early, but that means coming home from work, eating, and going straight to bed, getting bracing yourself for a long night ahead. It's never a terrible idea. And there have been nights when I have had sick kids and I've fallen asleep in their bed at 6.30 when they go down too. You're a coach, you're love. Go in at your day. i got to get dressed and take the kids to school. Thank God, though, it's picture day, and it's also Sarah day, so that my kids have cute hair. Uh-oh. <laughs> it's okay. 